Hello to everyone on the internet. My name is Matt, and I welcome you to the Fueled by Coffee podcast, episode one of the Evergreen episodes. This is our little holiday uh, post season two holiday series that we're we're running with uh, every week of December, and this series will be more festive. Uh, we're going to talk about. Christmas related things, holiday related things. We're having holiday related coffees throughout, some snacks, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's gonna be a fun time. Fun way to kick off the holidays, good way to get into the Christmas spirit here in the old Northeast Pennsylvania uh, today for episode one. How could I not bring back the legend? <laughs> 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 my brother-in-law, uh, Sean. You're pushing it there, pal. He was on episode, uh, season two, episode seven and eight. If you listen to season two, it was a really big success. Like, I'm really pleased with how really? it, it, it was, you know, sometimes things drop off. You know, there was a pretty big gap between season one and two because of yeah. things that were going on. There was like... Season one ended in January of 2020, and then like season two didn't start till like August. And I put mm. out like a, two or three episodes between there, but that mm -hmm. was it. Yeah, and like consistently, like anywhere from like the lower end would be like 28 to 30 listens up all the way up to like 40, 45 listens mm -hmm. per episode. So we're doing it did it's really good. well. Yeah. Um, if you're a new listener, I encourage you to check out Fueled by Coffee podcast on SoundCloud, and these should be going up on Spotify soon. And YouTube word so uh, just check out fueled by coffee podcast <laughs> if anything else fails just check it out on SoundCloud uh, we have two seasons of episodes and a couple specials lots of great uh, things it's based around coffee and conversation with my friends and family and what have you what have you not um, lots of great stuff there's something for everyone but today we are here evergreen episode one uh, coffee wise it, it's unfortunately it's not a holiday coffee but the creamer is yeah i guess yeah you're right so yeah i wasn't even thinking so about that today i'm super excited to try we haven't i've been wanting to try this for months bones coffee yeah shout out to bones coffee company what is it Sh sean brought it over because he got some for it's his it's a family. sumatra single origin it's a dark oh. roast it's yeah pretty good it's it's really good and yeah. in it we're using the buddy the elf sugar cookie coffee creamer it's funny because last year it was just sugar cookie mm -hmm. coffee creamer and this year you have to emphasize that it's buddy the elf mm -hmm. because he's on it and it just makes it that much more magical that much more festive yeah and majestic yeah but also and it makes you that much more excited <laughs> oh, oh um and the other great what thing did you think i was gonna say i was gonna say like erect <laughs> well that's i was gonna go there but it's really good i didn't want to be rude it, it's really good i've had a couple sips so far it's really good um i like my coffee dark oh yeah it dark coffee is good strong coffee is good you got to be able to taste it through the through the creamer yeah like absolutely a lot Absolutely. And um, the other interesting tidbit, um, I've thought about this for like the last week or so. These episodes, we're probably going to have some sort of snack. Sean and I just went on a run to Coopersburg Diner. If you listen to Season mm -hmm. 2, Episode 8, Diner Wars, Lehigh Valley Diner Wars, go check it out. We picked up some of the legendary peanut butter chocolate chip cake. It's incredible. It is absolutely incredible. Uh, we're, so if you hear us chowing down at all... Don't mind us. We're just enjoying some delicious thick cake. If you don't, if you go to Coop, and you don't get this as a dessert, you're you're going to hell. Like you're sinning for sure. <laughs> like you you are sinning. I know. I was on the fence about getting it, and Sean was like, "Matt, that's a sin going to Coop and not getting this cake, unless it's breakfast. Mm -hmm. And lunch is forgivable, but for dinner, like you have to get the cake. Mm -hmm. It's a must. So yeah." So just a big, uh, big happy Christmas season kickoff here at Fueled by Coffee Podcast. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. To everyone out there. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Happy yeah, Kwanzaa. All, all that stuff too. Kiss his ass. Kiss my ass. Kiss your ass. Kiss your own ass. We're just going to jump right in to where the holiday season kind of kicks off. I mean, you could argue that the holidays kick off at Halloween. Normally, I would say so. Yeah. I mean. It's like the it's pretense. It's a little different. Yeah. But Halloween's more for safe. I mean, <clears throat> <laughs> oh, 
And Ooh. It's not for Satan. No, I'm, jo- I'm joking. Uh, um, no, no yeah, I mean, it's just, it's different. It's but like yeah, the trifecta of holidays. Yeah, pretty much. Well, and then you have New Year's if you count that. I mean, I get paid extra for it. I so. do. I count New Year's <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I get holiday pay too. And then after that, it's your birthday and my birthday. Your mom's so birthday, th- your dad's birthday. Yeah. Mark my Hops sister's birthday. birthday. <laughs> yeah, so it's, you know. Yeah. Our it's, birthdays are holidays too. Yeah. And so like <laughs> Thanksgiving just like the uh that's kind of like the the kickoff, I guess. Uh, like uh Halloween would be like the preseason, I guess, and then Thanksgiving's yeah. like yeah. the big kickoff to that the works. holidays. That's it. Everyone's getting hype. Um but let's just let's just jump right in Thanksgiving. Uh since you've been home for the last was it 3 years now? Yeah. How do we handle Thanksgiving? What are I cuz I feel like, you know, most people it's like they have big family gatherings and everyone's just having a big old great fucking time and they're just like, <laughs> yeah, family. And like, yeah, like we love our families, but I think they can be a little overwhelming sometimes to be around when yeah. it's when it's the whole big group together. Yeah. Namely some certain uncle <laughs> and my dad. Oh. And when they're together, they're just too <laughs> loud. Very loud. Very loud. Very eccentric men but normally so you have to be in the mood for listening to that yes and after yeah. after a short time it does get old yeah it, it starts to grate on you and it's like you just know, a little bit like the majority of the family is italian so we are <laughs> it's it's a loud one and the women like wine and and the women are loud too mm-hmm. by the end of it it's definitely just like you're like all right that's enough yeah you you feel kind of relieved once uh it's all said and done and everything's over you're feeling like a beached whale. A big fat gluttonous slob. <laughs> big fat gluttonous slob. Ha ha. <laughs> but ever since I could remember, Sean and I have always kind of just gone off and done our own thing on Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, not even since you've just moved. Putting back the up. titles on the line. When I was younger. Yeah. We would just kind of uh, <laughs> relegate. Would that be the right term? Relegate ourselves to the middle room. I have no. I, I don't even know what that room is or the, what that word is. <laughs> uh, uh, we would just kind of. We would kind of just travel. We'd say our hellos and then just kind of slowly make our way into the middle room where the PlayStation was. Yeah, and then we would just zone out and play video games. Be in our own little world for a while. Pe- people would pass through and say like, "Oh, what are you doing?" And we'd be like playing game oh look at the size of that guy oh. yeah, yeah we, we'd always play the wrestling uh, video <laughs> games as as i think we explained on season two episode seven we'd play like the the wrestling video games i and, think so yeah i think we touched on that yeah and we would just like beef up characters and go beat guys oh up yeah and yeah that's right i like i remember the one time like uh, one of my grandparents passed through and they were just, it was the, one of the ones i wasn't close with and they were just like oh what are you doing and i was like oh just you know playing a game and they're like oh well Who's the bad guy? And I was just kind of like, that guy. Like, just like, I was like, please leave us alone. It's like, we would just go and do our own thing. And then it would be like, dinner time, we'd eat. And then it would be like, all right, back to the video games. Like, Yeah. But like... It was just nonstop back then, dude. We, we never stopped playing video games. It was always... You want to put the titles on the line? As time has gone on, you know, our, our, our way that we handle Thanksgiving has evolved in a sense. Uh... Sean and his family moved back up here in 2017, and every year, it seems as though Thanksgiving, uh, we, so, we always let everyone get their food first. Yeah, you got to. Because my... Because some people go back and forth, and and they just take forever, and it's like, I'm not just going to stand here in this line, holding a plate for no fucking reason. And we're talking about the same person. Uh, Yeah. Like, they go in, they get... That happens all year long. Yeah. It's not just Thanksgiving. But it's amplified on Thanksgiving, because there's like a train of people in the kitchen. Yeah. And they're all waiting on one person. But then, not only that, it's just like, you know, not that there's like a ton of people, but there's enough people that it's like, just, let's just stay out of the kitchen while other people are getting their food Mm -hmm. and uh you know so we let everyone get their food and do their thing and then as they filter out we kind of filter in yep and then we get our food we we, you know whatever's left (laughs) and we might be a little silly with it slapping drumsticks around slapping hams (laughs) so we kind of filter in we we do our little thing and uh the uh, at least last year i don't remember the years before it but last year i remember very clearly (laughs) The table in the dining room was full. Oh, yeah. 
the living room it, well, it wasn't completely full but there was just a lot going on in there, there so yeah there was enough in there we just kind of uh st we stayed in the kitchen and we and just stood and ate <laughs> stood and ate and talked and goofed around but you know what like that's fine by me yeah it's it's totally fine yeah. especially you know we're we're being silly boys for yeah. sure and i think my mom at it's one a point, happy day yeah and i think my mom was like are you gonna come in and sit down we're just like no we're no. good like we're, we're good we just kind of do our own thing and uh oh man speaking of last thanksgiving this is a random sidebar so last so as many people who listen to this podcast know i work overnight and uh so last thanksgiving so i i work on fridays i had off thanksgiving and you know it was a bummer i had to go to bed you know earlier like seven or eight o'clock um and everyone was still here and it, it sucked you know i missed like the late night football game i missed time to just like hang out and eat like a slob with everyone you know because you know thanksgiving there's always dinner and then like you know there's like dinner at like three or four and then at like eight o'clock there's second dinner when you're sitting Pretty there, much yeah when you're watching christmas vacation yep by the way uh that is a family tradition in, yep. my, fa in my family and you know you're sitting there and you go you know what I think it's time to have more Thanksgiving dinner, and you go out and you warm up some leftovers. You go and get another piece of pie, like the Rock's strudel. Oh God! No, but like you know, you have second dinner. I missed out on all that because I had to go to bed. But yeah, the, the the big task that I had last year, Black Friday at work. Uh, oh, the, the store I work next to, the store I work at, <laughs> is next to a Lowe's, and I'm assuming they did this just for their employees. Uh, that work on Black Friday. I had a 15 dozen glazed donut order. And for those of you who don't know, 15 dozen glazed ring donuts, that's, I think it was, I, I did the math, it was like 80 to 90% of the whole set of donuts that I make daily. So I pretty much made two days worth of donuts. Yeah. And I remember like, it's so obnoxious. Yeah. Well, like, like, what a crazy number of donuts, you know? I know. 15 dozen. And, like, I've had orders before. Like, I think my first weekend I was there, I had an order that was, like, three dozen assorted. And it's just, like, whatever. I mean, you know? it's three dozen. Like, yeah. But, you like, know. but this. So the thing that pissed me off with this is my manager, awful at communicating, um, terrible manager. It's all around. But the order was placed in, like, September. <laughs> and I didn't know about it till, like, two days before Dear God. like I, I showed up Wednesday like two days before this was going to happen and it's just taped up on my production table he and didn't it, even like verbally let you know no he wasn't like an asshole like he could have come to me in, <laughs> in like September or October or even like two weeks before two weeks before Black Friday I've been like hey man like just look, give you a heads up we got this huge donut order just wanted to like give you a heads up so you can figure Holy your shit, shit out but like I just showed up Wednesday two days before and it was like just taped up there and I was like what is this and I was like 15 i was like holy shit <laughs> it was one of those i think that was the first like real big time though that i really like planned for something like normally i would be like oh my god like i can't do this i can't do this like this is you know and like have like almost like an anxiety attack about it i allowed myself 10 minutes to freak out about it and i was like this is fucking crazy this is That's smart but then like it is weird it's like ever since i started listening to jocko willink like his podcast, I'll listen to clips on YouTube. I, I, I hear his voice in my head sometimes when I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed. I'll hear him like, don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> Make a plan and execute. Go into battle and you execute. <laughs> and if the enemy grabs you by the throat and you're out of bullets, you grab your knife. And if you lose your knife... Then I'm you scared. kill them with your bear. Yeah, that's like this I'm is scared. But like, I'll hear him in my head, like just being <laughs> like, beautiful. like Matt. Yeah, chill out. Yeah, get up and be okay. So like, you know, uh, shout out to Jocko Willing for helping me get, to get my, you know, my mental organization uh, in a better place. But like, I just, yeah, you know, it, it was just a crazy. I like ten minutes. I let myself freak out, and then I was like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna come in. We're gonna haul ass. I'm gonna start frying donuts half an hour earlier. And that's what we're going to do. And I made the plan, and I stuck to it. So that's what I did. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought that's why you were looking at me. No. 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 No, so I just made a plan, and I executed. And it turned out beautifully. I had five minutes to spare before I had to fry the rest of the day's donuts. It was perfect. Oh, yeah. 
But that was last Black Friday for me, man. It Good for you, Matt. Wild. Good for you. The life of a donut maker. It's, it's beautiful. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, so getting back around to it. So Thanksgiving, uh, one of the big stories that used to get brought up every single oh my fucking God. year. Do you want to you want to tell the people? I I don't want to tell the whole story, but <laughs> just, just just give. But them. what was it? The 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 turkey plate broke. Yes. Right. And this so is probably like ten years ago, eleven years. This ago? was a long time ago now. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I was like still a kid, pretty much. Yeah. And so of course the turkey dropped to the floor. Um. Yeah, it was ridiculous. And it was ever- just absolute chaos. The the whole room erupted, I feel like. I feel like, well, yeah, because I think all of us had gotten together to say grace. Yeah. And my mom was, like, trying to carry the turkey. Your like, poor mom. God, no, my mom, God my mom's, bless St. Diane. Yeah, she's Seriously. a patron saint. She was trying to carry the turkey from the kitchen to the, the dining room, and the plate just, like, broke. It was, it was, it was so much. such a freak thing. At the time, we used to have a lot more people. It was, like, both of my sisters, Sean, my parents, two sets of grandparents, an aunt, uh, an aunt's girlfriend oh, and, uh, <laughs> cats out of the bag oh my god and then her kids yeah it was it was it was a lot more people than we have now now it's you know the family has dwindled down people have died mm. and people have moved away but you know what it has grown though because you have kids now well yeah that makes up so i mean yeah, they, they, a little bit of growth i have I mean, a girlfriend killian's only getting bigger yeah and so he will be eating more and more every year yep i have a girlfriend who's also a foodie um yeah, it's just yeah. So like the family's grown and changed, but um, mm. my poor mom, we, she she got this huge turkey and the plate like shattered from the kitchen to the dining room, and uh, there was nothing she could have done about it. It was just meant to happen. Yeah, and and it wasn't like she dropped it. It was like she no. was, like for those out there listening, you're probably thinking she, no, she's like standing there holding it and the plate just like imploded, and then just hot turkey everywhere, and. Of course, my poor mom is probably so embarrassed, but also so pissed. Cause well, well, because it's like anxious, anxiousness enough, you know, just like being around all those people and like and like making that performing. whole meal. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like exactly. Yeah, it's a production. But it, yeah, back then it really was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so like, it, but the one person, oh my god, the one asshole, <laughs> and I have no problem saying this. Because fuck you. I apologize for my language, Doug. I'm so sorry. And if Kayla's <laughs> dad, Doug if listening. Kayla's dad listen, you know what? No, he says fuck you. I'm sorry, Gary. I'm not sorry, uh, <laughs> Doug. I'm sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> dear God, this one asshole. <laughs> <laughs> just the way you say it, because like, well, that's what she is. You just gotta gotta emphasize. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's sister, uh, uh, also <laughs> known to be obsessed with Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac. Oh my God! We're not going to call her by her actual name. We're going to call her by her her persona, her stage name, her stage stage <laughs> stage name, <laughs> her karaoke name, Sin Nicks. Oh yeah. She has not shown up to a family Look function. Her up on YouTube. In- oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> there are videos of her doing drunk karaoke on YouTube. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's, it's worth a Google. I Google. <laughs> it's worth a Google. She she's just such an asshole. I mean, like as a kid, you didn't really see it. Like I remember as a kid thinking she was cool. Yeah. I remember like I vividly the one Christmas. It, I might have been like six or seven because we had the PS2 by then. I got like Pac Man World Two for Christmas or something. It was like a 3D Pac Man game, super fun. And I remember like playing, and she came in and she's all like, "Oh, like what's up, bud? Like, oh, what are you playing? You know, just like." And I used to, I was like, "Oh, she's super cool." Like, but then yeah. as you get older, you start to see the corruption. <laughs> you start to see the evil. <laughs> she, she got to be a little much. Yeah. I mean, like I, I thought she was really nice and she was cool for a while. And then I was like, oh, man, like, she's going to come over and she's going to be all touchy-feely again. I'm like, isn't she gay? Like, what? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Brother. Mm-hmm. Give you a big old hug and, like, kiss you on the cheek and grab and a reek your of ass beer and, and cigarettes. Yeah. Oof. But anyways, the reason why I'm mentioning this person. Uh, so th- Hold on. What, what shirt did she wear for Thanksgiving? There was always this one shirt that she wore that had a bunch of Native Americans on it. And didn't it say, like, the original Continental Army or something like that? The original... No, I, 
I can't even remember what it said. Or like something about like taking the taking our land back. Yeah, or it was something. it was something like. Is yeah. It, yeah, it was something <laughs> that had to do with the Native Americans. Every Thanksgiving she wore it. Or wasn't it the original Homeland Security or something like that? I don't think it was anything even close to that. No? No. I don't know. But she would always show up reeking of beer and cigarettes. She probably smoked like two packs of cigarettes while she was over for three hours. And oh she'd God. always bring like a 48 pack of Natty's Light. <laughs> and, she, and she would drink a lot of it. It was just mm-hmm. like one after another. Um, and again, like... I would never judge someone for chain smoking and drink. Like, you need help if you're, like, chain smoking and drinking heavily. I mean, Natty's Light's, like, warm pee-pee water. I don't drink, but from what I've been told, it's the yeah, shittiest never of the shitty. had a sip. I, I don't know if I've ever... Yeah, you know what? I have had one once, and I was like, bro, like, why are you, why are you drinking that? Yeah. Like, why? It was not mine. Mm-hmm. You know? And they, they gave it to me just to... We're doing like a chugging contest or some shit. Mm. So stupid. It was way too cold, and I did not. It was just horrible. Yeah, and she just she just reeked. It was cold of, as ice. Because it was Natty's ice. <laughs> <laughs> Molson ice. Molson ice. Fuck you, Molson. If, if a beer has ice in the name, you know it's cold. <laughs> Even if it's warm, it's cold. But uh, yeah. I don't know how they do it. No. Yeah. She was always just drunk. She reeked of cigarettes oh. and beer. And at these family functions with these children, she was drunk. And as I got she older... horse lady hair. I, oh, yeah. As I got older, I just noticed it more and more. And it was terrible. And, um... But this year, my mom dropped the turkey. She was the one making the big hoopla about it. Like, we were all like... Like, for us, it was like... Oh, my God. Like, I'm, no. si- I'm, st- I'm sitting here with my hands on my head, like, oh, no. What are we going to do? And then the dogs are like, oh, hey, what's up, yeah, turkey? Yeah, and, and so Nick's <laughs> just like, oh, my God. Like, on the floor, picking it off the floor and eating it. And she's <sighs> like, that's the best damn turkey I've ever had. Yeah, she kept it saying that. really awkward. And I think that was maybe, like, 2008, 2009, because then every year she came after that, she had to mention it. Or yep. every function, she really only showed up for Somebody like. Somebody did. She really only showed up for like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Let's be real here, but every time. Yeah, I mean, it used to be birthdays and everything. Well, I feel like when she was with Pam, only because she had a driver. Every family function, then she had to bring up that my mom dropped the turkey. And as we said, my poor mom, my patron saint mom, just she got so sick of it like she like i remember like as i got older she'd be like oh fucking fuck you you know like she was so pissed just waiting for the clothesline from hell (laughs) and uh, but then like a year or two after this happened cindy just stopped showing up to family functions and you know it was a blessing in in disguise (laughs) you know at the time we didn't know it but she just became more and more of an asshole and like my dad would still be like oh it's just nice to be invited oh and it, every year for like the longest time it was oh my sister's coming and then the day of she'd be able, like some excuse not to come it was kind of weird um i'm but, too drunk yeah <laughs> i don't have a driver yeah. but just like sin nick's huge asshole like that's that's why i'm just she's an asshole um i but, mean it's it's the season for love and family and all that but like there's also a lot of assholes this time of year, I mm-hmm. feel like. Like, people just get weird. It's, it's that Blink-182 song about it. Like, either you're, like, a complete asshole, or, like, you're, like, over-the-top lovey-dovey. Yeah. You know? Like, it's mm-hmm. just, like, it's it's a weird time. Yeah. I guess some people have their own, like, hang-ups with Christmas and stuff. Like, they're still bitter about their terrible childhoods or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> But yeah, it's just like... That's why you have kids, and then you just spoil the shit out of them for Christmas. Right. You know, like... Speaking of which, how many pies did we have this year? T- uh, that, Pumpkin, oh sweet potato, gosh. pecan, peanut butter... Gluttonous. Apple. <sighs> good lord. So good. Thanksgiving, man. What a wild time. Kickoff. I mean, so it, it has to be wild to be the kickoff. It has to be the spark to light the fire, you know? But now let's, let's transition. Uh, three years ago, as I said, you and your family moved back up north. And I had mentioned in an earlier episode, you guys lived with uh, family for a little while while you yep. were while you were getting you know getting yourself situated, getting a house and all that, getting a real job because my <coughs> first job here, like I was lucky if I got forty hours a week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, that that sucked. But um, uncertain times. What 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 came with you moving back up here were a bunch of adventures, lots of fun oh, yeah. adventures. Yeah. For sure. And the first one actually happened to happen the day before Thanksgiving. 
What was that? You and I, I pitched you an idea that I had had for years Uh about making a peanut butter sandwich on a whole loaf of bread. Is that when the peanut butter happened? It was the day before Thanksgiving. Oh my God. That was, what a night. I pitched it to Sean and he was like, we have to do it. We have to make this happen. I mean, like if somebody told you, I have this idea, (laughs) we're going to make a peanut butter sandwich, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with an entire loaf of bread. Like... You don't ask questions. You just say, yeah, like I am down. <laughs> Absolutely, I will help you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, oh my God, dude, what what a time. We ran the giant. <laughs> oh my God, it was so good. We picked out a really nice, we got like an Arnold's like ancient grain bread, I think. I think we got a uh, Jif Crunchy. Yes, yeah, so we made this peanut butter on a whole loaf of bread and it was, it was good. It was not bad. We took, like, we had, like, half of it left by the time we went, and we took it on the train with us, and I remember us getting it out and, like, unwrapping it, and people are looking at us like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, what is that? Yeah. Like, because by that point, it kind of, like, all, like, you know, the the got jelly got all soaked in, and... But it was still And really it just good. looked like this blob of, like, I don't even know. It's like, I think there's bread in there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I don't know what else that is, but... It was good. Oh, it was, it was really good. good. What kind of jelly did we use? I think it was some sort of blackberry. Yeah, right? Because I wanted to use That's strawberry, and you were just like, nah, man. And I think we got, like, blackberry. Yeah. We should have used strawberry. Why yeah. didn't we? Oh, I'm Maybe. sorry. I'm sorry. But remember, we did, we did like, sorry, a whole... God. No, I think we did use strawberry. Because, you know, I think I did got we? a squeeze bottle. That's... And we debated... That was we, the squeeze bottle, We used wasn't it? the whole bottle, I think. Well, or yeah, most of the, course. Or we used, like, the whole jar of peanut butter or something. Well, I mean, you have to. But, uh, yeah, that, so that thing was crazy, man. <clears throat> it was a wild time. But the, the reason why we call it the peanut butter, uh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so my dad has narcolepsy. Uh, uh, well, he won't admit it, but he has narcolepsy. He falls asleep anywhere and everywhere, at any time of the day. And, uh, so, you know, it was like, it wasn't even late. It was like seven o'clock at night, the day before Thanksgiving. Like, how are you conked out on the couch the day before Thanksgiving at seven o'clock? Like you gotta with, be with lit. everybody. You know, all around you doing yeah. stuff. You gotta, you gotta be lit, man. Kids all crazy. But we made it, and my mom was like, "Oh my god!" And she takes. <laughs> she was in, impressed. She takes it in to show everyone, and my dad's sleeping, and she gets like six inches from his face, and he's just you know, like melting into himself on the and couch. He gives a little smile. No, and and she was like. And he, he was like, get that out of my face. And she's like, do, do you see what it is? Do you, do you? And he was like, stop, leave me alone. Like, you know, he, she, he like woke up out of a dead sleep. He was like pissed off. He Yeah, he, he. I feel like he was doing that often at that point for some reason. He went through a season where he would just... Be like mad when he woke mad up. Mad when he woke up. Yeah. I mean, we were like fucking with him while he was yeah. sleeping. But... Uh, <laughs> So maybe it's all of our fault, but 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 she was like, "Do you see what it is?" And he just goes, "The peanut butter," <laughs> like real real pissed off. Sean actually, and then had I think he probably stormed off. That was like you know talk kickoffs. It was the kickoff oh my of God, our that was great of our uh, where we picked up our friendship, and then after that, uh, we actually started going on these late night diner runs with my old friend Jack. Jack, mm-hmm. if you're listening to this, I highly doubt you are. But if for some reason you're listening to this, these were fun nights. Oh, yeah, for sure. These were great nights. Uh, the first one I remember being to Top Diner. And uh, yeah. I'm going to plug it right now. If you haven't listened, uh, Season 2, <laughs> Episode 8, we did a Diner Wars, a Lehigh Valley Diner Wars, where Sean and I ranked our... Uh, you know, we collected data over the last three years of eight diners that we've gone to regularly, and we ranked them. Mm-hmm. A lot of fun, great episode, good call-outs, uh, good shout-outs to some great diners. Um, go check it out in the Season 2 playlist. But, uh, yeah, we we went on a top diner run with Jack. And keep in mind, so this is December at this point. We had gone down to Raleigh, moved Sean's house, and uh, Sean and Amanda, my sister... We moved their house back up here, and then in a Penske truck. Oh yeah, that was another with a adventure. Springy seat. Oh yeah, <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> that well, you know what I remember? It was ridiculous. Then? I remember sitting there. We'd and go like, over a bump, and I would just like bounce up and down <laughs> for a minute. Like it's like a trampoline seat. It was crazy. I remember you were trying to I was turn. Very comfortable, actually. You were. Tra- it was a comfortable ride, man. Yeah. Like, we, we had shit packed in there tight, but it was I, a fun ride. I never used a Penske before that. Mm-hmm. I always used U-Hauls, and like. 
you all suck. Yeah. Like if you, especially like the twenty six footer, like the big boy, mm-hmm. that thing is absolute dog shit. But this thing, I think it was about that that size, and it was just oh my god, what a great ride. I remember one point you were trying to turn and I was like trying to look for you because it's like a big truck and I was trying to look for you and you you said something like okay Matt you need to sit back because your big head's in the way (laughs) I have to see too and I was like I was trying to help you sorry (laughs) but your big fat fucking head (laughs) dear god but yeah so we we moved back in the Penske and then we started going on these adventures a couple weeks so I think around Christmas time I bought my first car I'd been driving around my dad's Jeep. We were kind of just sharing it. Shitty 2006 Jeep Liberty. That thing had so many problems toward the end of its life. But <laughs> the heat didn't work. The thing was deadly. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Sean's doing this. The one time I was driving and I was sitting like with one hand on the steering wheel and the other finger was just like pointing up, touching the windshield. Yeah, it was that close. Like I, I was really like, "What? Like, <laughs> I've never seen a vehicle like that. Like, why is yeah. the windshield so close?" And I remember, it's so strange. I remember it was a Wednesday night, and at the time I was going to church. So I'd off on Thursdays, and I was going to church on Wednesday nights. <clears throat> mm-hmm. This time in specific, I went by myself. And um, when I got there, there was apparently no church. They canceled it. Yeah, so I remember I had made plans with the boys, and I was like, look, I'm getting out of church at like 8.30, I'll be home by 9, we'll, we'll all go out and have a good time, because this is when diners were still 24 hours, and we weren't in the middle of a pandemic. But um, Quote-unquote pandemic. But yeah, I uh, I remember I got there, and I was like, well, uh, guy, I think I called Jack, and I was like, yeah, church is canceled, I'll come pick you up, and I picked both of the guys up. I had just gotten my first car, <laughs> paid for it in full. You know, it was my car. I had the title and everything. It was a uh, 2000 BMW 323i. So a couple weeks later, we go on this Top Diner adventure. <laughs> Top Diner is in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Shitty diner. Oh, was. What? Well, now it's something else. East Family Restaurant, whatever the hell it's called. It might be West Side or East West Side? Something. something uh, who cares? It sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Not now. worth going to. <clears throat> but at the time, it was still pretty good because we all yeah. got breakfast. Well, I mean, it's it was breakfast, though. We all got breakfast. Yeah, even though bad. Even though it was like 9 o'clock at night, we still all got breakfast. And um, that was the time. I think we briefly mentioned it in a previous episode. There was a guy there that looked yeah. like the villain from the Scooby-Doo movie or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some big like dr eggman looking guy i don't even know horseshoe haircut yeah well, not really haircut like just bald yeah up top but keep the hair on the sides i don't yeah. i don't understand that this is this is and too this is probably one of the nights i remember like really having my first like fun late night endeavor as an adult maybe i was 19 either way yeah whatever either way i was still like young and like I, I kind of had like a sheltered uh, adolescence for reasons I won't explain. Your own, your own yeah, fault. My own fault. Oh, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I didn't really go out and do much, but like being with these guys, um, I had people to go hang out with, and like so we went to Top Diner. I remember I got a really good strawberry cream cheese stuffed French toast. Yeah, that thing looked great. It was really good. You got. You may have just gotten, like, the breakfast platter with, like, everything. Probably. It sounds and, like me. Yeah. And I, I don't know what Jack got. I, I honestly don't remember. But, like, we just sat there, and we ate this food, and we shit-talked and drank coffee, and you and Jack got in an argument about gent music. We weren't in an argument. <laughs> you were having... You, you guys always thought we were in arguments. Well, because you guys we were both... just discussing You it. guys were both... Fair, v- Respectfully. Both, both very passionate about what you talk about. Yeah. I mean, there were undertones of, like... You know, little little jabs, but it wasn't anything too crazy. It was all in fun. Yeah. We still, like, respectfully disagreed. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it, it was all right. But, so we sat <laughs> and we... Fucking gent music. Yeah. Ugh. We sat and we just, we shit talked, we drank coffee, we had good food, and then, like, I remember it was probably, like, 10 o'clock or so. It was, like, some, it wasn't super late. And we were, like... So what are we doing next? <laughs> yeah, because we were, like, ready to face the world. Yeah, we were just, like, we're so like, energized. What's next, boys? And we were just, like, I don't know. So then I think we said something like, 
oh, like, let's go to Walmart in Quaker Town. <laughs> so, yeah, on the other side of the world, you know? Yeah, and it was it was a cold night, and I remember, like, by the time we left, there was a dusting of snow on the ground. Like, it, it had started to snow, and it wasn't, like, big flakes. At Walmart? No, like, when we left Top Diner, it was starting oh, to snow. Oh, was there a dusting already? Yeah. Huh. Or, or I think it was, like, just wet at that point. We were like, oh, we'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And the thing is, for those of you who don't know, like, my previous experience had been a four-wheel drive Jeep, whereas the bmw was a rear wheel drive sedan like a little one a little sedan really low to the ground terrible in the snow but we um we're like yo let's go to walmart and it's like snowing we're like oh whatever we'll be fine so we make the trek from allentown down to quakertown and like as we're traversing down that way the snow is getting heavier the flakes are getting bigger and it's sticking to the roads like it's getting it's getting a little dangerous and by the time, and I think something had gotten brought up about there being an adult bookstore on 309 on the way. Yeah. And so. It's kind of creepy looking in the middle of. It's like a little shack. Kind of nowhere. There's nothing around it. Yeah. They're open 24 hours a day. Yeah. And I remember we were just kind of like, you know, we should stop at that 20, at that adult bookstore. Ha ha ha. Yeah. And so like on the way down. By the time we got there, dude, there was probably at least two inches, of, three inches of snow on the ground. Like I remember, Pro- probably. I remember getting out yeah. and like it was like covering like the sole of my yeah. shoes. Yeah, it yeah. definitely was. And um, so like we do, we were like, I was like, should we do it? Are we gonna do it? And then I just pulled in. And I was like, all right, guys. So like, first of all, it says on the front door that you have to go in the back door. Yeah, we were like, wait, what? Yeah, like, we parked out front. Mm-hmm. And uh, like nobody parks out front. There's yeah. like a fence for the back yeah. lot <laughs> to like hide that you all can't of the old through. creepy yeah. men. Ugh. Um, yeah, oh, so, so, so what an adventure this was. We go in through the back door. It was like there was a wall of dildos over there, and then <laughs> there was a <laughs> there was a doorway to a, a very dark room. Yeah, and you could hear like porn being played. In uh, it. Yeah, like. Yeah. You heard, yeah. 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 It was interesting. <laughs> and so, like, as you walk further down the hall, it's like, that was to your right, and you're, like, in a hallway. You just work straight, you walk straight down the hallway, and you end up, like, in the main little, it's, like, one room. The store is literally one room. I thought that, no, that was part of the same room. Was it? Unless I, it had two doors. Maybe it had one. I don't know. The, because I remember those two guys coming out. You're thinking remember? of the, there was a door in the main room too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. okay. So there was one before. Mm-hmm. There okay. was like a big doorway you could wow. see. In. So it was like a there was two ways out. It was something like, like that. These yeah. guys chose to. Yeah, that was interesting. So like we go we in. Have and to elaborate it, on that. It, it was just. <laughs> Oh, it was disgusting. Like, just it was so dirty in there. It was dirty. Like, there was a creepy old man working behind the counter, and he had a cat. Yeah, in a in one of those like you know cat transport crate things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we saw a massive dildo called the Great American Challenge. So naturally, you see a dildo of this magnitude, and you just you have to lift it up and see how heavy it is. It was the size of my forearm, a grown man's forearm. Oh, f- even for bigger, sure, even yeah, bigger. Yeah, it was huge. I mean, how many pounds did it say it weighed? Didn't oh, it say it on heavy. it like it was heavy? It weighs however many pounds, and we we're like, dear God, like what? But yeah, that thing was solid. You could use it as a weapon in a zombie apocalypse. Let's just put it that way. It was way. big, it was purple, and it was angry. And it was see-through. Yeah, but so we are in there for a while. And like, just see, like looking at everything. And like the thing is, it's like, even like the porn DVDs they had. Oh, they look like they look super gross. old, like from the 80s or something. It was well, like, it gross. Just, it just looked disgusting. Like everything was dirty. That store must have been a front, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, for there, something. there was some weird glory holes back there or something. But, but as we're in the store, so this door that shines, it's like a half door, like a waist high door. And yeah, it was, there's, wasn't there's it? like a little dollar, like a dollar acceptor. Yeah. And it says $1 to go to the back. Yep. And I said, guys, I have three ones. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> and, oh, fuck no. I dude. was joking, by the way. But, yeah. Uh huh. But I remember <laughs> as we're like standing there, just and like, I'm sure this guy figured out like two minutes into us being there that we weren't there for serious. We were just there to like. Yeah. Fuck around. Yeah. But like these, I think there were two guys that came out of the back. Oh yeah. But, but not together together. It was like maybe 30 seconds to a minute apart. 
but they like walked out and went right out the door. Yeah, they like walked out real quick, and I remember like they kind of just like looked down. Yeah, like, they were like looking, covered. They were like face. ashamed, clearly. Like because we were like, yeah, you should be, you fucking weirdo. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, wow. I I almost felt like we might have gotten into a fight there for some reason. Like <laughs> I felt like something could have happened in that direction. Maybe, but yeah, that yeah, was. They- Wow, the place was gross. And after Grimy, dude. we saw everything, and we we're like, "All right, I've had right. enough. We're good. On to we Walmart. need to get the fuck out of here." By the time we got out to my car, there was a whole bunch of snow on it. Like, oh, it, for sure. it had gone from like two inches to like five inches from like, yeah. like the twenty it, minutes. It we're escalated in there. quickly. Yeah, the flakes were big, and it was it was like a really, from what I remember, it was like a heavy wet snow. Oh yeah. So this point, by this point, three oh nine is like covered. And at that point in 309, it's like a downhill run. Oh, yeah. And so, like, I'm driving real slow. I can't even see a line in the road. I'm driving real slow. We made it down to Walmart. And, uh, you know, we went in. We had a little adventure. We always had our little Walmart adventures. We were being silly, silly. Throwing yeah. shit around. I mean... <clears throat> uh, <laughs> uh, was that the time Jack needed uh, laundry detergent? And he, yeah. was, he was like, oh, I got to get laundry detergent. And he got, like, Tide Pods. That's when that whole thing was going yes. on. Yes. <laughs> oh, Tide Pods. We have. I think I have a picture of him sitting uh, like in the water section with his Tide Pods. Yeah, I. I, think <laughs> I had that picture too. Yeah. I think we were both taking pictures of him because it, it was it, just so silly. And that, and that was also the time the they had Clementines like right at the front of the store where the security camera was. Mm-hmm. And I have a picture of him like with just his head poking yeah. over the Clementines, <laughs> oh, like God. waving. So great. <laughs> I might uh, post that on the on the social. Yeah, that was hilarious. Um. So great. Yeah, just a fun little adventure. And then, you know, by the time we got out of Walmart, I think the snow had kind of stopped, but it was just, it was like on the roads. It hadn't been plowed. It was really pretty, but... In that car, it was terrifying. <laughs> well, yeah, because uh, we had to go back up that hill <laughs> that we <laughs> sledded down. Yeah, and, and we, I mean, it was good because we had a lot of weight in the car, like you and I well, and then... me. And, yeah. Well, at the time, you. I was yeah. heftier at the time. That's me when I was over... 210 probably yeah, yeah same but probably like around there but yes yeah, so like we had multiple it wasn't just like me <clears throat> in the car you know like a girl but you know like we uh yeah so so and the other thing too is that's when jack was living on the lehigh campus on south mountain yeah so we had to drive up yeah. south mountain <laughs> Yeah, I struggled up South Mountain. Sli- I'm pretty sure I like slid through a stop sign. We oh, dr- that sounds about right. We, we dropped him off, and it was just that was a crazy ride home. We didn't get home till like probably after two. It was like two or something like two that. Two or three. I mean, and, that was the standard though. Two or three. And I remember the next day, I had plans to go uh, <laughs> practice some music with Aaron at like uh, nine a.m. Eight or nine a.m. <laughs> I remember that. So like, I remember like I got up and Sean like with his kids. Naturally, they get up earlier. I remember getting downstairs and we're seven o'clock. We were both just like, we were like, yep, we knew what we did last night. Like we're tired, but that was so much fun. And I remember just being like, Aaron, you got to see this. And I I showed him the great American challenge. (laughs) And, uh, Oh God. And I remember I was just like, uh, periodically I would send Jack a picture of it. Yeah. The great American challenge. And just like, he'd be like, oh, very funny. We'd do that to each other. Yeah. Just like, yeah, it was a night to remember. A day to remember. It, uh, uh, no. uh, and then... Uh, a new band. <laughs> a new cover band. <laughs> a day to remember cover band named A Night to Remember. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so there was A Night that. for Remembrance. <laughs> there was that adventure. And then the other big one I remember, we did a, quite a few of these. I'd pick Jack and Sean up after church on a Wednesday and we would go to John's Plain and Fancy. Plain and Plain. Don't sponsor me. Never, ever, please. <laughs> uh, for those you of you, suck. For those of you who don't get the reference, listen to the Diner Wars episode. Cannot stress that enough. So I picked the pick the boys up, and we go grab coffee and a bite to eat. And then usually it was followed by a Walmart <clears throat> trip. Um, it always. And pretty I much. So I, I don't remember a time that it wasn't. The, okay, so this time in specific, I don't know if this was the same time as. I may be meshing two together right now. Well, it all that whole time just like time just like together. yeah, blurred together like. Just. Um, but we would sit there, you know, we'd get our food and we'd sit there, and then afterwards we would because you know it, it's a relatively unpopular diner, especially at night, like later at night. We'd get there well, at like there, nine or there 10 were o'clock. some weirdos 
a couple of times that we were like, yeah. okay, why are you bringing <laughs> your kids here at, you know, yeah. at midnight yeah. to eat yeah. dinner? And or like those, those people that were playing that, that game. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, the, is that what it was? Mm-hmm. It was something similar to that, at least. There's a, gr- there's like yeah. a whole group of people. Yeah. They were tip, you know, what you would expect. Yeah. Trench coat wearing, yeah. overweight weirdos yeah uncomfortable but like we would sit there we'd get some food and then like 10 o'clock the coffee started rolling and we would just sit there and like the waitress would refill our carafe constantly and you know we, we would sit there till like one or two in the morning just like talking having a good time you know there was no one there we weren't it's not like we were taking up a table nope. or anything like that and it's a huge restaurant yeah it's barely ever full if I, ever i was gonna say i, I wonder like you know when prime time is for them <sighs> probably like senior hour on the weekends but but no like we i remember so the one time we're sitting there and like they have these lights and they have these lights where it's like it's like one of those lights that hangs from the ceiling and there's like a sheet of glass underneath the light and it's like a big circle yeah. and the one night jack was sitting there just putting <laughs> the creamers on top of the the glass and he just kept doing it yeah he left like four i have this picture of him like lovingly staring up at them and it was great it it was it was just funny it was so random he just kept doing it and no one noticed and we were just laughing and uh and but then the the main time i remember the chris this is like right before christmas um we're sitting there and you know they got the restaurant all nice and decorated for Christmas and I wouldn't say nice but okay Christmas decorations from the 80s <laughs> <laughs> and you know the Christmas tunes are rolling and oh, God. Uh, we're sitting there and say. now you know <laughs> during Christmas time there's a regular rotation of songs that you normally hear on the radio one of those being all I want for Christmas is you by Mariah Carey Ugh. normally you hear it at least once an hour we yeah. sat there from as I said 9 or 10 p.m until i think it was like finally 2 30 and we were sitting there and we're like all right we'll leave after my mariah carey comes on all right like we're, we we knew it was gonna happen first, at some point first we were like why hasn't that song come on yet yeah like, i'm so surprised it was the right station whatever it was yeah it was like because they were playing all 100.7 or whatever yeah, whatever and we were like yeah like why isn't that it's weird and then we we're like all right we'll just we'll, we'll head out when mariah carey comes on and like Another hour passes. All right, we'll leave on that one. Like we just kept saying, you You're know, like, when, damn, what is this ever gonna happen? Like, what, we're gonna be here all day tomorrow too. And then, <laughs> and then it's finally like two or two thirty. The song comes on, and we're all like, hey, all right, let's check, please. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> let's get out of here. Yeah, that yeah. was great. Uh, that was a fun time, but yeah, I don't know. Just great. <laughs> like, it's just I, it's I, so ridiculous. I associate those times with Christmas time because yeah, it's like cause, that's when it was I mean, three years was, ago. Yeah, I mean that was. Uh, pretty big memory yeah i mean it, it just it was just so so much fun like so simple yeah so stupid but like there was something wholesome about it oh yeah it was just it was awesome it was like i said for especially me especially with the snow dude like oh yeah it's just it was beautiful just, just like for me too like i said getting being able to get out with a couple guys and just be out and late like and like yeah me finally being home after five years and, and like me have, having grown up in that yeah. time like you know not being a kid anymore a and lot just, changed it, it, yeah some for the worse but uh <laughs> well but <laughs> we won't go there yeah but no my in a future episode but my my point being like you know just being able to be out with some guys goofing around and having a good time and like being out late like I, I had that like a taste of just like wow like just just a good wholesome time like you said the diner <clears throat> runs the porn store experience oh, the great american challenge it was so wholesome <laughs> <laughs> it was so wholesome <laughs> it was the most wonderful time of the year um <laughs> oh god but anyways we're gonna jump back a little bit now another memory mm-hmm. i had and i think i've briefly touched on this with you new year's eve 2011 okay you had just gone into basic training for the army in mm-hmm. November, and you came home for Christmas. They let you come home like a month later for Christmas. Yeah. So I remember New Year's Eve. Uh, so the year is 2011. Let's let's give you a rundown. I am in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jack, my best friend at the time, uh, Modern Warfare Three had come out. I had just gotten really into music and playing guitar. I was listening to like Blink One Eighty Two, After the Burial. A mirror, you know. Yeah. I just started because. So the thing is, is like I grew up with Sean pretty much being there as like a, a 
figure to me like a and like he would almost like I would almost like look to him like what should I do what should I do and then when you left for the army I kind of had to start like figuring shit out on my own yeah and like even though you were only gone for a month I kind of like started to work out in my awkward shell I started talking to girls and Mm -hmm. stuff and um yeah, not that I was ever the ladies' man, but like I kind of started to mature a little bit. So like, so like you know, at the time it, I'm in a coming of age stage, you know. Yeah. But there were also some iconic things like Modern Warfare Three, and there was like some music stuff I was getting into, and it was again just another like interesting time in my life. You know, it's, you're, you're growing up basically. I always think about getting you your first electric. Yeah. And like it just makes me really happy because like you've done so much with it and you stuck with it and you're still playing guitar and you're way oh, yeah. better than i am oh stop <laughs> oh stop <laughs> oh stop but well, i mean are. if you want to check out any of my music go to uh look up matt nichols on soundcloud or union coffee break uh, anywhere else <laughs> union coffee break or um lasonia or um met met any of those projects <laughs> on soundcloud you can look up any of those that's all my stuff some of it I'm proud of. Or King Slob 69. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Um, but anyways, yeah, so it was just a good coming of age time. And, you know, I remember Sean came home from basic training for Christmas. New Year's Eve 2011. I had Jack over. Uh, as I normally did, I had a friend over on New Year's Eve most years. Yeah. Sean and my sister went to see his friend's band, Buried at Dawn play oh, yeah. at a bar somewhere. Adam Bittner, shout out to Adam Bittner. And uh and Mike Stoffer. And Mike Stoffer. Yeah, he was in Buried at Dawn, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh man. I'm pretty sure he still was at the maybe he wasn't at that time. No, didn't they get back together just to do like the album release and stuff? I'm I pretty sure they did. I can't even remember. Either way, Buried I at Dawn, remember. that album was really good. I still have it on my computer. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, no, it what dude, really good. It, well, you know, um Should I play I, one of their songs here? I don't I don't think... Maybe I will. called buried at dawn anymore no at the time i, f- I forget what what they're called now damn it i'm sorry mike they actually have a new album that's going to be coming out soon they just recorded and everything wait is but bittner in the band still no oh no 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 new guys no, all he new hasn't guys? been for a while um no it, um well yeah pretty much yeah yeah but it's uh, like mike and darius still mm. but um yeah other guys cool i, I don't know everybody but uh zane's the singer uh-huh. Who I, he used to work with me, but mm-hmm. then he moved buildings. Mm. But yeah, apparently he's a maniac. But yeah, I guess he just re-recorded his vocals or whatever. And huh? So interesting. Anytime now. Shout out, buried it on or whatever. I forget what whatever they're called it. now. What is Mike, the new name? Mike, uh, comment on the Field <laughs> Coffee Instagram so I can give you guys a shout out or send me a message. I'll give you guys a shout out. But um, yeah. So you came home. And uh, you guys went to see Buried at Dawn. It was at some bar or something, and you came home. I think you were like you were, you were a little out there. I don't even remember drinking there, honestly. Well, yeah, but I probably did. Yeah, you did because you came home. So at this time, again, I was younger. I was like really inconsiderate. <laughs> I used to what? I used to, so we we used to have this like green tea, a pitcher of green tea in oh the fridge at all God. times. And I remember I had poured a glass and I left like. A swallow left in the pitcher, you know, instead of like uh, making more, like washing out the pitcher or whatever. I forgot you used to be like that, dude. And I remember, and I, so Sean came home, and my mom was like so annoyed. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, like Matt, what the fuck? And, um, sorry, mom. And, uh, I remember Sean comes upstairs, and like Jack and I are sitting here, like playing Modern Warfare 3, or like, I, I remember Sean was like, Matt, come here, come here. I, I need to, I need to teach you something. And he, he, you took me in the kitchen, and you were just like, what is this? You're like, what is it? How much do you think this will pour? And like it wasn't like you were like Matt. What the fuck? You were just you were you were kind of like Matt. 
Come how on, much, man. Come on, man. How much do you think this would pour? And I was like, I don't know. It'll probably be a glass. So you're like, you want to test that? You want to test that theory right now? And you grab a glass <laughs> and you pour it and it pours like three eighths of a glass. Not, not <laughs> It was like 20% of it. And you were like, just make a new picture. And I was, I was like, okay. Come on, man. Yeah. So there was that. And like, I was like, okay. But then the new year's eve ball drops yeah happy new year haha and <laughs> and they're they were playing that song that they always play when the ball yeah, drops whatever. you know whatever <laughs> and uh <coughs> that's beautiful thank you i'm tearing up that was my mouth trumpet uh but anyways they they played the song and i and but they had like some sort of like jazz rendition of it playing like some smooth mm. jazz and i remember my dad was smooth trying to say jazz. like it wasn't jazz or, and sean you, you were like no this is jazz and he was but, like yeah, no like he's trying to argue it son i'm sitting in between them and he goes matt listen with this ear not with this ear and he covers the ear my <laughs> ear that my dad is on and he yells in my other ear jazz <laughs> I was such an asshole it's back then. jazz. But, like... I'm a lot more mellow now and it, not so rude. It was so funny. Like, I still I, remember I it, hope. though. It was so funny. Maybe I am. Jack rude. probably... And that was something Jack and I remembered for years. Really? That. We thought it was so funny. <laughs> I'm glad that Jack thought I was funny at one point. Different vibes from a different time. Album yeah. coming soon from Halo. But now, let's jump back to Christmas. Christmas time is here, as you heard. As you heard in the opening jingle that I recorded. Yes, I recorded. I wrote and recorded all of that, mind you. The opening jingle for this episode. Christmas time. It's a pop punk medley for Christmas. Christmas time is here. Um, we always have those gifts that we get that are just unnecessary, shit. just garbage, <laughs> or just yeah, unnecessary or just trash. And, you know, it's not that we're ungrateful people, but sometimes there are just gifts you get that are just, they're just like, what? and, you know, it oh, always. Oh, you really didn't have to. And it would always, you know, <laughs> it would always come from the relatives. And I, this is, I use this example universally with everyone. I always say, you have that one relative who doesn't know you very well. You could see them often and they still don't know you, or you could see them like once a year or once every few mm -hmm. years and they just know nothing about you and they just buy you the shittiest gifts. And, uh... That for me, uh, one of those people was the asshole, <laughs> Cynix. And then, and then, I, I'm sorry. I, I I apologize for ripping the dead right now. But my dad's mom, my 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 grandma, whatever you want to call her, nanny. Yeah. Okay. First of all, I was thinking about this at work. Do I have to address this, nanny? What kind of fucking name is that? Yeah, I don't know. Who could, like I've heard of Nana. Yeah, I have a Nana, but like nanny. Ew. <laughs> I have a mammy, but that's totally, totally different. different. Totally different. It was like Nona. That's Italian. Oh, well, yeah. Grammy. My mom's mom is yeah. Grammy. Grammy makes it. Your mom is Grammy now. Yeah. It's just like. Regular Grammy, as Killian yeah. says. Yeah. Regular <laughs> Grammy. But yeah, it's just like. So like my, my nanny, my dad's mom. Uh, they Like we saw them like at least once a month for dinner. And like that could be a whole episode in and of itself. Yeah. Oh. Oh my god! But, you can have five episodes <laughs> just on them. But like, how many stories do you have, Matt? Oh, so many, so many. But like, she just as often as we saw them, they were the relatives. Those grandparents were the relatives that like every time you, you if it could be two weeks apart, it could be a month apart. What grade are you in? What are you <laughs> looking at in school? How are your grades? Like the same cookie cutter questions that they didn't remember from the last time because they yeah. really didn't care. They weren't listening. And so, like, no matter how much or how little you saw them, they knew nothing about us. And they never really made an effort to get to know anything about us. And so coming from that, we are going to get into the final segment of this podcast where we are going to talk about shitty Christmas gifts. Because let's be real, it wouldn't be Christmas if there wasn't dud gifts. Oh, yeah. You gotta have at least one there. I have a couple honorable mentions that I'm just gonna throw out right now before we get into the, the heavy. Wait. So honorable mentions, these weren't even like they were shitty gifts. I got them from like Sa Santa doing air quotes. <laughs> you know, Santa. My parents got them. But um, hey, hey, what if somebody still believes, dude? Then Santa's sick <laughs> will come on them once a year. 
because he fills it up all year long. Uh, makes me go, uh, You've heard of No Nut November. <laughs> well, Santa <laughs> takes it to a new <laughs> level. Anyways. He just keeps coming and coming <laughs> and coming. <laughs> Santa's big hairy sack. <laughs> But like, anyways, these weren't even like they were bad gifts. My parents know me well, and they've known they knew me well growing up, and like, so they were really cool gifts on paper. But they were ones that didn't work. You know, you have those gifts where it's like, "Whoa, this is so fucking cool," and then it doesn't work. First one being, uh, I think it was in like first or second grade. I was in my Star Wars phase, like mm-hmm. my really hardcore, like Lego Star Wars all the time. Mm-hmm. Star Wars action figures. Damn, watching. Was that a thing back then? Lego yeah. Star Wars? The OG one? Oh, yeah. Really? That was the best one. See, like, I wasn't paying attention back then. Oh, yeah. yeah. So good. Not um, to that stuff. So, huge Star Wars phase, and I got this, you know, I played a lot of video games at the time. I got this inflatable Darth Vader couch. Oh, God. Like, like a kid, it wasn't like a full set, it was like a yeah, kid's couch, yeah, yeah, you know, like yeah. you fit one kid on it. But yeah. it was like an inflate, it was like black. And it had like you know f- like or like flame Darth Vader face on it. like super as a, you know as an eight year old six seven eight year old you're like holy shit like oh my god my own couch to play video games I'm moving like, out mom yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just like you know it was super cool but like the reason why it was shitty was that it didn't stay inflated <laughs> it kept deflating we inflated it and I remember like an hour well, especially later especially how rough you were with everything not, dude, no 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 it was like Christmas you day swantoned on it no and, dude it was like the yeah, same right. day like uh-huh. they had to like yeah, take yeah, it back yeah. to the store because it didn't work uh-huh. because you swantoned on it <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff Hardy over here <laughs> jumping off the the Titan Tron or whatever to season whatever 2 episode 2 to hear about my backyard wrestling <laughs> career also episode 3 he took the ladder out of the garage <laughs> I, uh, Swan toned <laughs> off of it onto the Darth Vader chair. And then my dad yelled at me for touching his ladder. <laughs> it wasn't even that it was a bad gift. It was just that it, it didn't stay inflated and it was like disappointing. The other honorable mention. Wah, wah, wah. I think it was the year after. Um, and this is one of those things that you see every year. There's always like some sort of gimmicky gift that you see and it's like, you know, parents are like, oh, let's get this for little Timmy because like, yeah, this would be great. It was little Jimmy and little Johnny. Yeah, sorry, little Jimmy, <laughs> little Johnny. Shout out to our truth. Please sponsor me. Oh, God. Um, I'm surprised it took me that long to ask for a sponsor on this one. Normally, I'm like right out of the gate with that. You didn't ask for one already. No. No. Yeah, you did. I said don't sponsor me for John's Plain and Fancy. As long as I have <laughs> my my ten people, <laughs> I, my ten people or less that look at my stories on Instagram. By the way, you can That's follow sad. Fueled by Coffee podcast at Fueled by Coffee Pod on Instagram. And you can check it out on Twitter at Fueled Coffee Pod and on SoundCloud and, you know, wherever else. But anyways, uh, yeah, the other honorable mention was the uh, 7-Eleven uh, Slurpee Maker. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say slushy and Slurpee in the same oh, word. Yeah, well, it's like it's a, a Slurpee, buddy. Slurpee Maker. And it's one of those things that looks oh. really fucking cool. You, like, it, it was supposed to just be yeah. like you, you put ice in it and dump, like, a soda. Yeah. Didn't work. That's it, sad. It did not work whatsoever. I was so hyped. And we tried making like a Fanta slushy slurpee. Of whatever. course. Didn't work. No, it didn't work. So that went back to the store. Cool gift in, in you know, on paper. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, as a kid. Dude, if like, it worked, that would have been the greatest gift ever. Oh, yeah. But it just, it didn't work, unfortunately. But uh, those are my honorable mentions. Now let's get into the truly dog shit gifts. Like these are gifts that I just. <laughs> oh, God. They got returned every year. Absolute dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> Not only was it my, my grandparents on my dad's side that got the shitty gifts, it was also Sin Nicks. Let's 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 segue back. Let's swing back around to Sin Nicks, my asshole Brother. alcoholic aunt who just reeked of beer and cigarettes and was drunk at all the holidays. Uh didn't know us well. And as time went on, the gifts that she got us significantly dwindled in value or, I guess, interest from us. And the thing is, it's not that we were ungrateful. It was the fact that there was, like, zero thought put into them. It was, like, last second. 
yeah it's like it's yeah. not like when someone like gets you something smaller and it's like look like this really made me think of you like and you're like holy shit that like when i got you like the constitution for your birthday and you're oh like, hell yeah dude. holy shit but like this was just like oh i need to get them a christmas gift let me run to the gas station really quick and you know <laughs> pick some random <laughs> I was shit just out gonna say the gas station yeah yeah like that's what it was on <laughs> par with so for me i don't know if you remember this so so the thing is when my dad's grandparents would come over for christmas right or my dad's parents my Whoa. apologies they'd come over for christmas and they would bring those extra large jumbo size gift bags full of stuff. No, you cannot buy my love. Fuck you. But <laughs> God forgive me. I'm so sorry. Well, it depends on what's in the bag, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, you cannot buy my love. Is there an amp in there? <laughs> Any but, vintage pedals? But those of you who have seen gift <laughs> <laughs> gift bags, it's like the ones that are like waist high, like the ginormous you could fit ones. Children in them. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, there was one for each of us. And I remember like the one year they show up and they're like, "Oh, Aunt Sinex." Uh, no, they did not call her that. I'm calling her by her stage name. Uh, for those of you who are just <laughs> tuning in, for those of you who are skipping around. Um, and she, oh, Aunt Sinex, your gift from her is in there too. And I remember it was like this prism shaped box, rectangular prism shaped box. And I remember ripping it open. Uh, it may have even just been a plain box. I don't even think it was wrapped in anything. I just cut it open and I pulled it out. And it was this illusion bank oh, for God. your coins. What? And yeah, so it was like a cube. It was like a. It was kind of rectangular, but it was like a cube. This seems familiar. And all of the faces except one were just like this like gray color. And then like the front was like a window you could see through. And inside, so there was the slot at the top. You put it in and it started as like a, like a, a larger funnel. Mm -hmm. And then it funneled. It was a funnel. It like went, it got more narrow as it went down. And then in the bottom, there was like a little box and you drop your coins in and it would be like, how is my coin going through the funnel into that box? It was like it was like a stupid illusion. What? It was so stupid. <laughs> Literally, just I remember being like, "Oh, cool." I mean, the best <laughs> thing about it was that there was like you know already a f quarters in it. Ooh, yeah, awesome. But like, it was so fucking. St you know what I ended up doing with that thing? Giving it to the thrift store. I ended up smashing it with a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah. Oh god! Later on in life, when I was like an angry teenager, I think I just needed to blow off some steam. Did and you I light it on fire? No, I just oh, took it in the garage and smashed it with a bat. Lame. But you gotta light everything on fire, dude. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do it, as a teenager. It's just it, like I'm with, angry, raging hormones. <laughs> baseball bat to whatever it is, and then light just, it on fire, or light it on fire first, and then baseball just, bat. What a poor excuse for you. Like that's like a total. Like, yeah, like, that's like like what yeah there's it's, no thought involved in that it's just like it's here like, here it's like i yeah. had this in my closet <laughs> it's like the lamest piggy bank ever yeah and, yeah and upon, it's not even shaped like a pig it was so stupid that was that was the lowest tier um next tier we're gonna jump back over to my my grandparents on my dad's side and this was <sighs> they loved well at least my nanny loved the bonton oh yeah and boss cobs boss cobs is tight i like boss cobs yeah, yeah i mean i've gotten champion sweatshirts there on yeah. sale for like 18 bucks yeah like, i mean that's of course like any store like that there's good stuff and there's not good stuff but like bonton no matter you know no wonder why they're like out of i think they're out of business now or, oh, like they're all dude, closing yeah, i i mean i haven't seen one in forever but yeah so they would go to bonton for christmas time and they would just get the worst clothing for all of us yeah it got to the point where every year it'd be like do you have the gift receipt and we would take it all back and i would just like we just use store credit <laughs> like yep like they didn't get the hint <laughs> like i remember growing up there were quite a few times like some of the and i don't want this to just be like a total negative segment of the podcast i got some awesome fucking christmas gifts sometimes like oh, like yeah. from them like the one time i remember they got me a bunch of dragon ball figures Hell yeah. some of them were like the lame ones where it was like you know switch on the back to like do punches and stuff but like but the, it, i mean it's still dope yeah it's still dragon like, ball I'll or like it. or like <laughs> remember when i got as a kid when i was i was really into collecting wrestling action figures and they got me the like tlc ring oh yeah and it was like it had like the stage and <laughs> a big ring and like batista and john cena sick that was a fun christmas but then like yeah as time went on they would just bring these jumbo bags <clears throat> of clothes from like bonton and 
oh my god so bad always return them i remember in specific like the one year there were two shirts i remember in specific there was one actually no there were quite a few the one year i was like i think it was in like eighth or ninth grade at this point and like in the one shirt there was like a batman shirt or in the one bag there was like a batman shirt don't shit on batman dude no no don't, don't and there was like a, a shirt with like <laughs> spider-man doing like the web slinger thing like hell yeah stuff. but just like stuff that don't like shit on spider-man but no just like stuff no. you'd wear as like a six-year-old you know something like killian would wear now well i would still yeah. wear it i have a venom shirt so but i'm just saying like it just it just <laughs> looked juvenile to me well yeah of course of course yeah being in, in middle school and like early high school it's like you know yeah, you think differently then. Yeah. You care about what people Yeah. You know, see you wearing But like but wait, it, it gets worse. The the one shirt so like there was one the one year and it had like like a rat rod and it said like hot rod and there's like flames oh. on it and like shooting those, everywhere. Those were always just <laughs> oh my god. Or like or like the other one I remember it was like this green, like this like olive dark olive green color and it had like Skulls and tribal and card oh, suit like God. aces and spades on them and stuff and it said so it was like voodoo just like <laughs> like terrible like why would I wear that or, I'm not an Avenged Sevenfold fan <laughs> I don't listen to that Avenged shit. Sevenfold don't sponsor me <laughs> no but just I just and when I, uh, so like just these awful shirts like I would not I have taste you, you know what I remember in specific. What? You remember when like fleeces were like, you know, a thing oh, and they yeah. they'd be like a like a mock turtle turtleneck fleece with the like <sighs> little bit of zipper. Oh yeah. Somebody got me <laughs> one of those <laughs> oh, no. and I'm pretty sure it was camouflage. Like woodland camo but like not cool because I anything <laughs> fleece <laughs> for me, I'm just like no. Like I'm I'm not down with fleece like even oh, yeah. I mean like blankets cool yeah. like fleece it, it, that's it's different. cool that's different than wearing a if fucking... it's fleece lined cool yeah. i don't want it on the outside yeah. <laughs> like i don't want to look like a muppet like, <laughs> like in the army we had a we had a, a fleece that was standard issue yeah you could put your name tape and rank on it yeah yeah i refused to wear that really? thing yeah like i i was like this <laughs> is so gay like <laughs> I am not with like especially that one because it was like a longer fleece. Yeah. Like I felt like I looked like Oscar the Grouch or yeah. some shit. <laughs> like because it was just so ugly. That's amazing. So ugly. That's so great. Do you think it was? But, like some people loved those fucking things. Yeah. Uh, and I was just like, no. No. There's a, I see a lot of fleeces like right now at the thrift store, and I just yeah, oh, no, thanks. No, thank you. Yeah, no, lame. But I remember getting a lot of like famous guitars shirt I remember, shirts and like the whole shirt was just covered in like oh yeah. everybody's guitar you know brandy is, Rhodes and eric clapton see, and see like the thing Hendrix is, is like when people know you you're a musician or you play guitar then that automatically like they don't just, know they don't know that like you're into like a specific type of music or yeah that you know you're not just like a guitar fanatic yeah like yes you like guitars yeah but not but like, like not like i want to wear every guitar on my shirt you yeah know? that that's like a middle-aged pixie licks kind of thing. i was just gonna say steve from boston <laughs> <laughs> wrong name but steve yeah from like, boston please sponsor like, me you know motorcycle kind of shirts like you were saying the, like, the one the one in specific i remember that you got i think it was the same year i got either oh, the rat rod one or the voodoo one maybe that was the same year <laughs> The, I remember it was uh, it had two guitars on it there was like a flying V uh -huh. and there was like maybe a Les Paul and it was like <laughs> rock and roll and there was like tribal <laughs> and flames shooting out uh, of them those are like I, I've never <laughs> worn a shirt like that even as a joke I've mm -hmm. never worn a shirt they're like just that. so cringy and it's like, just like no. you said like middle aged like Walmart dad that's like yeah or like Q Mart, a six year old, you know, like that. Yeah, that's like, yeah, exactly. Like severe white trash. Mm -hmm. No, I've so never had the urge to wear a tribal anything, they were just or affliction, uh, or ugh, or even like there may have been a couple like horrible hoodies here and there that she got. Yeah, you're, you're probably right. Like, I remember she got me a Ramones shirt though, like the classic Ramones ah. shirt. I still have it, I believe. Wow, and I was like, oh man, like. My old one is like totally dead. I remember when you got that. You know, yeah. I remember that. But I haven't, I haven't worn it in a long time. I should, I should whip it back out, put it in we're, rotation. Wear it on Christmas this year. Oh God, yeah, maybe I should. Ramones, please sponsor me. <laughs> oh, God. 
<laughs> but yeah, so like there were just these awful, awful tribal flames, oh, voodoo skulls, rock and roll, just like cringe shirts. Um, and again, it's like the it, relatives it who don't know what Bonton, dude. Bonton didn't have a clue. But yeah, so the, there was the awful shirts. And then the one that I think you've been waiting for this whole time. What is it? So as I said, my aunt, Steve <laughs> Nicks, stopped attending family functions. Brother. Stopped attending family functions. And I think this was the first year she made an excuse and didn't come. At the time, it was like, oh, no biggie. But then, you know, it was constant after that. But this year, is 2010. My family got the the big family gift that year. Sometimes we have those. Was a Wii. My parents got us a Wii for Christmas, and you know it only came with one remote. It was the black one, which is cool. I think that's like when the black one first came out. Because there was like I forgot there was a black one. Yeah, so like we huh. got the Wii, and it came with, of course, the greatest video game of all time, Wii Sports. Oh it's hell yeah! Wii Sports, one of the goats. That, that was the best for the Wii. S- seriously, one of the one of the greatest video games so of all time. Um, but yes, we got a Wii, and it just came with one remote, which like at the time, like you you know you could share the remote, whatever. And I think we had like Wii Sports and maybe like one other game, but uh, we really wanted Mario Kart. We really loved Mario Kart. Uh-huh. At least I did. So, you know, when the time came and it was like, you know, around Christmas time and people are asking, like, oh, what do, what do the kids want? My mom gave them the tip, like, hey, we're getting them a Wii, you know, maybe get Mario Kart and like another remote for the Wii, right? So, Cynix doesn't attend Thanksgiving or Christmas, my apologies. She doesn't attend Christmas. And uh, a couple of weeks later, we go over to my grandparents for dinner, as we did, you know, a couple times a month for some pizza. And, uh,. <laughs> That was always wrong. Yeah. And um, as we're, you know, we, we walk in and there's the awkward greeting. What grade are you in? How are you? <laughs> what, 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 are, what are your classes? You know, just like the dumbest shit. Uh, I was in middle school at the time. And my nanny says, oh, your gift from Aunt Sin Nix is over there on the table. Check it out. So my, my younger sister, who's probably like six at the time, five or six, you know, her and I like run over to the, the you know the dining room table that sparingly got used. I have to throw that in there for my mom. That poor dining room table. We ran over and the gifts were not wrapped. <laughs> Why would they be? They were sitting in a CVS bag, completely barren. <laughs> yes. The shittiest <laughs> presentation of a Christmas <laughs> gift. I would have rather them been wrapped in the obituaries. I'd rather them be in a case of beer. <laughs> An empty case of beer. That reeks of cigarettes. <laughs> that she just blew a cigarette smoke in and put her ash her put her cigarette out on, <laughs> on the gift. It was just the Mario Kart game, the Wii Remote, and then the I think the, the Mario Kart wheel. Like, you can't even get those things from CVS. Like, how are they? <laughs> yeah, it's like she just, like, ordered them online and threw them in a CVS bag, dropped them off, and said, yeah, fuck like, you guys. What? <laughs> and so, like, and again, the gifts are awesome because it's, like, something we wanted. However, it's the carelessness that went into giving them. You didn't show up to Christmas. Yeah. You well, you stopped showing up for, yeah. the, for the future. Like, we haven't seen her. I've seen her twice, maybe. Stop showing up, and you just give us... Gifts in a fucking CVS plastic handle bag. Who does that? People that just don't care. But the great thing is, it has become a uh, a legend of sorts within. In, <laughs> that's like an inside joke now within oh, the family. How many do we have? Honestly, I, but like, if so many. I'll give jokes. people a gift in a CVS bag now, just to be, <laughs> just to you know get a laugh out of them because they'll be like, oh god, here we go again, you know, like. I'll be like, you remember that? <laughs> you remember that happened like 10 years ago, guys? <laughs> like, come on. I even had to explain it to Kayla. I had to, well, <laughs> oh, explaining God. to her who Sin Nix is, that's a whole other oh my God. can of worms. But yeah. yeah. So the CVS bag gifts, man. Just, why even bother at that Yeah, point? like, don't, don't even, just, yeah. Like. Just put the gift on the table. You can- <laughs> if you have to get me a gift, just put the gift there. <laughs> Don't even bother putting it in something. Is there, is there anything that you had thought of while I was going on that <laughs> that, that tangent about <laughs> shitty gifts? Oh, man, I mean, growing up, there were uh, a lot of things from people on, 
you know, that didn't get to see me a lot, that, like, just didn't fit, were not my style. Like, growing up, I never wore Nikes. Mm -hmm. I never wore white shoes. Mm. Like, I was, like, not like that, and I got this random pair of Nikes, like, not even, like, you know, the Jordans or something. Yeah. But I got a random pair of Nikes the one time, and I was like, ew. Like, Like, when I was a kid, like, not to be an ass, but, like, when I was a kid, like, I didn't even, like, I, I never saw professional skateboarding or anything like that, mm. really, at the time. But, um, you know, I always wore Vans. Mm-hmm. And I always wore Airwalks when they were still cool. Yeah. And, like, it was just, that's what I knew. Yeah. And they were simple. They There was nothing crazy about them. They weren't leather. They were just canvas. And yeah. Like, you know, so to get a pair of Nikes, I was just like, this is weird. Like, yeah. I, I don't. I don't like I've never had a pair of Nike's like it's yeah. so weird. Now, I mean, I've had I've had my share of Nike's, but um back then like I was like not cool. Yeah. Well, and, like it's very opinionated. Yeah. Well, and, like the thing is is like I'm I'm sure I sound like a total asshole through all of this. <laughs> but like grateful prick. Yeah, but like my mom my both of my parents always taught us like even if you get something and you don't really like it just, you know, say thank you and yeah, then like course. afterwards be like, "Hey, like of uh, course." And then, you know, like we'll figure it out. But it was always like, you know, just be grateful, say thank you. And like the thing is is like whenever someone puts effort into something, it doesn't even it doesn't have to be a grand expensive gift. Just the fact like no. I said the thought behind it, the effort behind it like I don't even care about getting a gift. Yeah. You know, like I love even, giving even gifts if now. You, yeah, like even if you give me a, a card with nothing in it, yeah. and it just like says something really nice that you wrote yeah. personally. It's not just the card that's saying it. Mm-hmm. Like that means a lot. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I remember plenty of awkward times oh opening those God, bags dude. and just being like Ugh. Like, and like the, the one gift that you really wanted was like all the way at the bottom <laughs> under the clothing, but you'd <laughs> you have to like get dig all the shit. You have to, but it would always be all like we'd be sitting in the living room, right? Oh, let me see it. Let's oh, take a hold picture. it up. Hold, hold it up. Hold it up. Oh. Yeah, hold yep. it up. Mm-hmm. That was it. Oh, what did uh, you get? Every time. One of my favorite Christmases, and like that might sound fucked up, Mom, if you're listening, but <laughs> which you're probably not. This Christmas, I just remember like. I got so much stuff. And, like, as a kid, like, I didn't get a lot of stuff, I don't think. Like, not, I, I didn't always get a lot of stuff. But, like, I would get, like, you know, small things that, like, really meant something to me. Yeah. Or, like, course. one big gift. Of course. Like, my dad would get me a PlayStation. Like, yeah. that, that was yeah. massive. Um, but this one Christmas. Um, will be a very special Christmas. <laughs> to me? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Uh, my mom was actually, she had, uh, she was in the hospital with appendicitis. <clears throat> like, she got it bad. Oh, good Lord. So, she had to get her appendix removed, obviously, because it was like, I don't know if it did burst or it was about to or whatever, <sighs> but like, wow. it it was bad. Like, mm-hmm. I remember, her, you know, her being pretty sick and, you know, not feeling the best and or looking the best. <laughs> You know, sure, like sure she just, that, you, yeah, you she did great. not look happy, and I felt really bad for her. Yeah. Of course, like yeah, um, but yeah. So I, I remember being at my mammy's house for Christmas uh-huh. because they were like taking care of us and everything. And yeah, I think my mom like just got home or something like that, and so she she wasn't able to actually go Christmas shopping for us at all, right? Because she was just like on the verge of death the whole yeah. season. Yeah, <laughs> so um. So, yeah, so, like, a bunch of family members got us gifts, and I think that was the year I got, like, Lincoln Logs, and, like, I got this awesome, like, this super cool coat. I think it had, like, corduroy on the collar or something like that, but, like, it was sick. And, like, I don't really remember much. Like, I I remember my Uncle Bill always got us, like, like cheap, um, nothing wrong with them, but, like, cheap, like, gun sets and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, it was yeah. like those were got, as cool as like Yeah, that. you got the handcuffs and you got like, you know, the caps yeah. to like make the pops, you oh, know? Like yeah. the, I loved that stuff. And uh so like I remember he always got us like a whole bunch of that stuff. Well, me anyway. Yeah, got yeah. me a bunch of that stuff and like as a kid I was just floored, like so excited yeah. about like all that stuff like it was just incredible. But yeah, that that Christmas it was like it was unique because I just remember like 
you know, being at my mammy's house on Christmas was always just, it was just special, you know, yeah. like that, the house always felt so warm and uh -huh. she had her special Santa curtains and stuff. And oh, of course. Like everything turned Santa in the house. Oh, and, yeah. You know, you had all the Coca-Cola and, oh, yeah. you know, Santa was on every Coke can and <laughs> it's just like there was something so just like warm and inviting and, you know, there was yeah. always something being cooked. Mm -hmm. Just super warm in the house, and I, I, I feel like uh, as I get older, that that kind of warm feeling, like it changes, like you feel warm in a different way. But yeah, like with the holidays, but it's almost like it's more nostalgic because, now. Like, yeah, because you've experienced, or like you experience that nostalgia at this time. You've experienced like that feeling so many times, like it's almost like you become numb to it. Yeah, and it's, it's really sad it's different in a way as an because adult. like you know yeah. you get so hyped as a kid, but then it's like now like there's been a couple years in recent years where like I love the holidays. I'm a Shannon. I go. I love Christmas. I love Thanksgiving and Halloween. But just like I remember watching Charlie Brown a few years ago and just being like, like it made me sad. Yeah. I love Charlie Brown. It's that, like, you, you get that feeling of longing for, like, Christmas's past. Yes. Yeah. You're exactly. like, man, like, I wish I could still feel that way. Mm -hmm. You know, like. And it's like. You, but you it's just different. You now. have to find it in different ways. Like I said, like, yeah. like, with you, I'm sure it's like giving to your kids. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, now, like, me and Amanda get really excited about, like, you know, giving to Killian and Vivi. Like, just to see their faces. And, like. Yeah. It, it's been very interesting and you know surprising we think one present's gonna be the big gift for them yeah like, they're gonna be like oh my god yeah like this is amazing uh -huh. and then it ends up being something that like you didn't expect instead yeah, yeah. and then like the big gift they're just kind of like this is cool like this is cool like they're still excited but like they're not as excited and you're like wow i didn't see that like <laughs> i really thought that was going to be opposite but the dark horse gift <laughs> <laughs> it was just yeah it was crazy it it is crazy yeah you know but like yeah i i love you know giving to them yeah and one of my other favorite things is uh since you've become an adult and you know we just like to give you checks or money or whatever oh yeah we always put it in something weird mm -hmm. like a rice dream carton still have it on my, <laughs> i don't even know what year that's from it's we've been doing that for a long time for, now ever since i was just like oh I'll just you know money is cool yeah yeah sean and like my sister amanda teenage years they just we always have to hide it in something weird well and then we, i started trying to do the gags back like remember uh -huh. one year i gave you the butter warmers and i was like here you go you know I, i've been looking at that like it's stuck behind my dresser you gotta re-gift it to someone i know like we just haven't we were gonna do it the one year and then like we just didn't that's the gift that keeps on giving clark <laughs> And yeah, like the whole nostalgia of Christmas. I, I try and chase it through Christmas music. I love giving gifts to people. Like usually once I get my gift situation figured out, I get really hyped. Yeah, because you're just like, oh my God, I just want to give it to them. Like, you know, most years you nail it and you're just like, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, you just, you know, as you get older, you kind of, I remember just like watching Charlie Brown and like, I love Charlie Brown, but I was just like, I got really bummed out. And I was just like, there's the whole scene where he's talking to Linus and he's like, I don't know, Linus, like I feel, I know I'm supposed to be happy, but I just don't feel happy. And I was like, yep, oh That's man. me every year. I was like, damn it, Charlie. That hit really hard. Yeah. And like, I was like, man, I feel that. Dude, he was so depressing, man. Like, but it's like, it's, such a it's that coming of age, of like, a kid. you become yeah. an adult and you're like, wow, like, yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. Dude, I mean, like, I feel like almost every Christmas, it just doesn't feel like Christmas. Mm -hmm. And by the time you know it, it's gone. By the time, yeah. like, you, like the it last. It happened so fast. The last few years, I hit that stride the week before Christmas. There's like yeah. a week left. It's like December 18th. And I'm like, yes, Christmas. Yeah. And like, I get hyped. And then by the time you know it, it's gone. And then December 26th rolls around. There's no music on the radio anymore. It's just back to normal you know, life uh, you know as, as you get older and you and you like you, you find new ways to really get hyped about christmas and yeah you really have to be proactive about it and like it, and it, it's, search for it for yourself it's sucky that like it's exactly you have to be proactive about it but like it's just you know i think we all want to just enjoy the holidays and like those of us that are fortunate enough to have the means to you know because not everyone's that fortunate yeah 
um, you just, you know, you got to find those ways to stay positive. But Christmas time is here. And, uh, you know, there will always be something great to talk about when it comes to the holidays. But with oh, that, yeah. that being said, we're going to wrap up right here. Uh, this has been Fueled by Coffee Podcast, Evergreen Episodes, Episode 1. Thank you to Bones Coffee Company for caffeinating this episode. Really good coffee, by the way. Like, Yeah, you liked it? I, oh, yeah. I got an yeah. order from them now. Please sponsor me, Bones Coffee Company. <laughs> I thank anyone who has made it this far. It's been a long episode, but you know what? There's a lot of good stuff in it. If you like what you heard, give us a follow on SoundCloud. You can follow Fueled by Coffee Podcast at Fueled by Coffee Pod on Instagram. Also at Fueled Coffee Pod on Twitter. And uh, these should be up on Spotify and everywhere else very soon if they're not already. John, I appreciate you coming on for another episode. Your episodes have been doing really well. Anytime, man. People have been asking for more Sean. No way. Yes, I've gotten comments. What, what Mike? Yeah. Is that, is that it? <laughs> Mike wants you to be a co-host. <laughs> yeah, I know. He he asked me the other day when he was relieving me yesterday. He was like, so you're going to be a co-host? <laughs> It's like, I love the podcast, dude. I was like, okay, thanks. Like, it's Matt's, but okay. I mean, Aaron and Doug are going to be co-hosts, too. Yeah. I mean, we'll all just be a big, happy family. It'll be like Howard Stern, but, like, not Howard Stern. Yeah. Or, like, the uh, there's, Fuck like, Howard a Stern. Diner Wars one came out two weeks ago, so it's still creeping up on listens. Go check it out. Uh, it was a fun episode. Also, go check out the Q-Mart episode. Controversial. Some people uh, Take themselves didn't even get seriously. to hear it, and they're just angry about it. All. Also, thank you for the free publicity, and fuck you. If you like what you heard, give us a follow. Check out our other episodes in the Season 1 and Season 2 playlists. Really good stuff in there. There's something for everyone. And you can follow us on social media. I thank you for tuning in. And check in next week. We're doing Normally we do two episodes a month. This month, we're doing four episodes, one per week. Check out next week special for the next evergreen episode. And I thank you all for listening.